Welcome to the London Property Podcast, your go-to source for navigating the complex and ever-changing London real estate market. Our digital marketplace provides informative and educational content from industry leaders through podcasts and videos. We cover various aspects of the real estate experience, including buying and selling, finance, law, tax, construction, design, and more. Join us as we delve into the latest trends and developments in the market and gain valuable insights from our panel of experts. Hello and welcome to London Property, the home of Super Prime. I am your host, Farnas Fazai Paul, and today we're welcoming Naomi Heaton back to the show. And we're going to be talking to her today about the co-living and the flexible living model and how this is addressing an evolving market here in the UK. Thank you, Naomi. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Farnas. It's great to be back. Let's start by putting things into context and what led you to be here today, having seen the historic steps that have led to the co-living and the flexible living model. The other house has been born out of what I could observe in my other company, uh, London Central Portfolio, LCP, which specializes in the acquisition of residential rental property, uh, the renovation, interior design, letting and management within prime central London. And managing um, an entire rental portfolio in central London, I could see how the trends in the marketplace were changing over a significant period of time, over a couple of decades. But first of all, I could see how people wanted to be centrally located, particularly if they were international. They wanted to experience the sights and sounds of central London and location was more important than space. So I could see people taking smaller units in order to be more central. That was the first trend. The second trend I could see was how people cared more about where they, where they lived and, and the lifestyle and what the place looked like. It wasn't enough just to have a roof over your head. Uh, it wasn't like anything does. It was to do with this needs to say something about myself and how I see myself and the desire to have an aspirational lifestyle, the idea of having great interior design. And so I could see how the importance of design was becoming more and more important in the offering and more and more important in what people selected. And then um, over the last decade, I could see how people were more demanding, that they wanted service at the click of the fingers. And that is obviously through the digital age and the fact that people are, are used to much more immediacy than they were historically. So I could see smaller apartments, better designed, more aspirational, and more immediacy of service. And that led me to uh, see that actually what our long stay tenants wanted, and that is people who may be staying in, in London for six to 12 months, they essentially wanted hotel style living. They wanted that amalgamation between what they get, feeling like a local, being part of the place, but having more amenities and more service. And that was the beginning of the idea. Uh, I could then see how people living in hotels, or rather staying in hotels, had lots of service, but they felt like a guest, they felt like a visitor, they didn't really feel part of the environment, and that was unsatisfying for them as well. The people were, were increasingly looking for experiences, aspiration, service and community, and a buzzy, exciting environment where it's all laid on. And that was the origin of the other house. Now, obviously, whilst I was developing the other house and saying, OK, well, let's fuse it all together and let's create this property where you could stay for a night, you could stay for a week, you could stay for a month or a year, that we're going to create fantastic public areas to bring the locals in, but also create this wonderful private club where you could feel exclusive and where you could entertain or work or chill out. Whilst I was working on that concept, Clearly, there were other things happening in the marketplace. So we started to see the um, onset of, of co-living. And co-living was an extremely innovative concept. Um, but it was a concept that was actually targeting a different kind of market. Uh, I see co-living very much for those people who are transitioning from probably being at university or living at home before they go and live independently. And they wanted an environment where being with a lot of other people, with a lot of other activities laid on, was, was the, of primary importance. In fact, their accommodation was probably of lesser importance. And so that co-living, which is probably for the kind of young 20-somethings, 
was a real trend that one was going to see and which was really, really innovative. Um, and of course, we were seeing the development of the service department market as well. But the service department market is, is still actually pretty much in its infancy. The number of, uh, of, of rooms s sold in central London through service departments rather than through hotels is probably running to about somewhere between 3 and 7%. So it was always a small market, but what the service department market enabled people to do was to stay for longer in a flat. But in a way, service departments are also slightly behind the curve. Just as hotels have been behind the curve in the experiences that they offer their guests, service departments have become, did become behind the curve simply because they were an apartment, but they didn't really offer much service. They didn't certainly didn't offer much experience. Um, it was you know, a flat that you could take for a shorter period. So that sector has to move forward as well. And so there were all these things happening, all these trends recognizing that people wanted to live in different kinds of ways, recognizing that what was happening behind the front door was really important, but developing in different ways. And really the other house and this whole fusion of hotel service department and residential living was and is entirely innovative within the marketplace. And both these models uh, that we're talking about, I mean, you, you know, yes, service departments have been around. And as you say, they should really evolve before they die at death uh, from just getting too old. But it's sort of been a market that, that that's established over, over the last seven years, would you say? I, I'd say with the service department market, it's longer than seven years, uh, considerably longer. But probably people haven't been particularly aware of their existence. And it's it's been particularly, I mean, it has been a, a particularly attractive market for people who are being relocated for a short term project, for people coming over for holidays. It's been a more cost effective solution than um, staying in a hotel and but that market has been has started from kind of zero base and gradually building and become more and more relevant and particularly over covid uh service departments saw a real solution in, solution exactly yeah. because people the hotels are closing down the most most of the people that were traveling were people who were staying long term one way or another and they did provide a real solution and i, and I would say that there are a lot of service departments now who are developing other amenities and other facilities or at least teaming up with um, restaurants and bars and so forth because we are talking about a lifestyle era now and I really feel that COVID in particular made people value the importance of experience. Not be in such a rush, be able to actually look around oneself as well as just doing the task in hand. That you're coming for work, okay, we'll tack on some leisure. Um, and that this whole sense of valuing time, valuing experience. Certainly now when I go on a trip and certainly on a holiday trip, the experiences I will be getting will be the most memorable element of it, how, whatever those experiences might be. So that's just become more and more important. But also, of course, over the COVID era, tech has become so much more important. Clearly, we have uh, Gen, uh, Gen Z, we have millennials, and, and for them, tech is... You know, part of their lives. But during COVID, tech became more important for an older generation's lives because that was how we were having to communicate and transact and everything else. And uh, the other house is founded in tech. It's not tech, which is thrust in your face and you don't have to use it. For guests who come here, residents who come here, who want the old fashioned face-to-face -face hospitality, we're there for them. But for those that actually want to book check in, access their room with a mobile key and don't want to talk to anyone because actually all they want to do is get to their flat because they're time short and they're on business. We have all the tech to enable that. In fact, we have tech which enables people to monitor how much energy we're using so that if we are over consuming, they can be part of our journey to become more sustainable and reduce our energy consumption. The tech will enable you to see how busy the gym is before you get down to the gym so you can manage your life better. You can order your food and drink on it. Uh, we're also really tech-based behind the scenes. And I think that's a really important element of what we are because you will find that most hospitality businesses are really low tech and that they're, they're dependent on historic 
tech solutions and they can't move away from them because their whole juggernaut is based on them. Whereas we were able to build all our behind um, the scenes systems, um, of which we have about 41, that no one will see except us, and they all talk to each other. And they all talk to us in terms of um, our understanding of the consumer and also feeding the, the, the finance and the accounts at the end of the, of the cycle. So tech is fundamental to us and being able to give people control if they want to be in control. And I think one of the great things about the other house is when you come and you do feel in control. Whether you're a tech person or whether you're not, you feel it's your own place, you can do what you want, how you want. It's that's not stuffy or sterile or formal or people observing you. It's letting you be however you want to be. Um, and experience is really important, great experiences. Now, interiors are so much fundamental to what we're doing. So we can talk about hotels, we can talk about service support apartments, we can talk about co-living, but actually what it looks and feels like as opposed to what the service is that you offer is as fundamental as the service. And we have celebrated British maximalism. We are the mouthpiece of British maximalism. It's colourful, it's bold, it's a little bit outrageous, it's contemporary, but it's clubby. And actually, that is as much part of what we are as the services that we're delivering and the ways we're enabling enabling people to live. And that will always be part of, so with the other house, uh, Covent Garden, we will be creating new environments which are potentially more outlandish, pushing the, pushing the boundaries even further than, 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 than South Kensington. But that is also part of us. So actually, it's not just a question of co-living or service departments or flexible living. Uh, it's, of course, it's what the services are that you offer and whether they're relevant and what the experiences you're offering and also the ability for spaces to be multifunctional. So during the day, we will have a lot of people using our spaces, whether it be our, our um, all-day cafe, the other kitchen, or whether it be down in, in the club, which is accessible to all our residents. Um, they may be working on their laptop. They may be meeting people for cups of coffee. And then in the evening, it morphs into the club environment. It, it, we have our wonderful cocktail bar, the Isle of Monkey, so called because we see our guests as not being a particular age or demographic. We see them as people who care about the planet. They care about social and environmental responsibility. They're wise as an owl, but they're people in search of new, different experiences. They're people who are in the know. They're the people who know about this haunt, which is really cool, but actually it's kind of slightly off the mainstream. So they're curious. So wise as an owl, curious as a monkey. And that is absolutely our ethos. That's our ethos in terms of the other house. It's the ethos of all the people that run the other house, who work at the other house, uh, wise and curious. And all of those things are fundamental to different living models, as fundamental as the model itself. So I always believe that markets find a way. And I think, you know, we're going through a transition in the kind of investment market in London, in, in the UK. And it's something that's of great importance to a lot of uh, serious investors all over the world. So as an investment model, this sort of co-living, senior living, flexible living is something that is kind of pushing forward and potentially uh, becoming a very valid alternative to the buy-to-let investors. So from an investment perspective, what would you, what would be your advice to people who are looking at the UK market thinking, you know, where should I be putting my money? How can I get involved? I mean, I know that the, the other house is a different scenario here because obviously you've got your main, main uh, investors here, but what would be your advice to people looking at this space? I think that there are a lot of really interesting sectors developing in the marketplace. Uh, of course, originally the rental sector was predominantly private landlords, individual private landlords with small portfolios. And gradually that's developed over, I suppose, the last 15 years for the, the, buy, the, 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 the big um, rental investment uh, portfolios, the big buildings which are specifically for um, for rent and, and run by institutional landlords. And of course, there was a huge amount of excitement and interest in that. And we do have an enorm enormous amount of rental demand. So it's an interesting or a valid sector. 
but there are many other different sectors within the marketplace and they are all important and they are all emerging and they are all um, focused and targeting targeted so as you say whether or not we're talking about senior living senior living has to be a really interesting market and there are one or two players in the market that are are doing things which are really great um, because that's again a market where the whole lifestyle is important the whole experience is important it's understanding that that market wants so much more than they've ever been offered previously so sectors like uh, co-living sectors like um, senior living sectors like service departments well I actually think that service departments will have to evolve and service departments will probably become something slightly different because it's just not enough to have a flat um, and so I think that for investors they should be looking at all these different um, opportunities uh, because these are all hinged around lifestyle um, what matters is what we do behind the front door it we, is no longer good enough to invest in bricks and mortar bricks and mortar have to be offering something relevant to today's consumers and today's consumers become more and more demanding and probably more and more of, aware of what they want and more and more particular as to what they get and if we don't recognize that particularity if we don't recognize the way that consumers want to live and the fact that um, lifestyle and experience is so important then ultimately any offering will not succeed so these are all investment opportunities without doubt that people should be um, looking at and should be on their radar because it is the way forward and, and possibly the market will fragment even more and there'll be other lifestyle segments that can be targeted which aren't being targeted at the moment and clearly with the other house I was particularly familiar with the, um, the long stay rental market and that was my lever to set up a concept which completely disrupts the market by combining a lot of different things in one um, but there will be other areas where the accommodation sector can be more relevant to a particular sector and you have to be targeted you cannot be all things to all people I mean if we look at the retail um, market those brands which are old familiar family names who are absolutely singularly failing because they are all things to all people and actually doing everything but nothing well and more and more we have to understand that the consumer market will become more and more segmented um, and we have to um, target those segments because if we're too broad we try and do too many things and please too many people you end up with no brand definition so having a history or always being ahead of the curve i'm going to take away from that that uh, you know the, the the future of of this space is very much going to be focused on targeting specific demogra demographics. So you know, as you say, the the co living is for the twenty year olds, the senior living is for, the, and then probably that will get even divided further. Yes. You're single, you're married, you've got yeah, kids, well, you don't. Well, yeah, may well be, and uh, whether or not is well, demographics not necessarily in terms of age although of course there will be age demographics and of course there will be um, offerings that are only relevant to young people but it's actually recognizing what people's needs are and of course you could have um, the same need across um, a wide demographic so if you take the other house um, I feel it's much more we appeal to people with a certain attitude to life rather than necessarily a certain age we have quite a diverse demographic here and also of course diverse needs because the reasons why you may need to be in long-term accommodation and of course the other house is aiming to be 50% uh, long stay guests that could be a year plus um, or you're over here for three months for whatever reason your needs can vary but your affinities may be the same and in terms of the desire to be somewhere cool and different and somewhere where you can feel good about coming in that you can feel good about yourself and you can feel good about bringing your friends and family in 
Uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be a demographic. It may be a type of person. But nevertheless, the whole idea is segmentation. And I am sure that the market in all consumer goods will become more segmented and has to. And interestingly, the word consumer goods is, a, um, is an interesting phrase because I don't suppose hotels have ever been seen to be consumer goods or service departments of consumer goods, but they are consumer goods as much as a brand of chocolate or a bottle of gin. And as you probably know, my background was in advertising. I started out in advertising as a director at Sarches. My whole ethos is looking at consumers and what do you say to them to make your brand relevant? How do you attract them? How do you keep those brand values fresh? And when I started up LCP, it was understanding that there were investors out there who couldn't get into the market because they didn't know how to find property, they didn't know how to renovate it, they didn't know how to let it. Uh, and LCP was probably the first buy-side agency in the UK, and it did everything for that investor who was probably offshore and hands-off. And that was just observing a need in the marketplace. And then the other house was observing a need in, in the marketplace and observing how consumer trends change. So we are as much... Can, and I used to work on the reason why I mentioned things like chocolate and gin is I and, and, and carefully not mentioning any brands, but I worked on what we call fast moving packaged goods. And that is the ethos that all these different property sectors need to bear in mind. How do we target the consumer? Which consumer? How are we going to be relevant? How are we going to be fresh? So you may end up having people, like-minded people, you know, who are all artists or musicians or techies living in environments that are practical for them from yeah, a geographical well, I mean, perspective. It, 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 it would be perfectly possible because they might get bored, sick of each other, and maybe they, an artist might prefer to live with a, a techie. But the reality is we have to be aware of what happens behind the front door and how people live. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insight with, with us as usual. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you back to the show again for I other topics. I look forward to it, Farnes. I always do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to our latest episode of the London Property Podcast. Head over to our website where you can browse our exclusive network of top experts driving the market. As a member, you'll have direct access to our experts and their networks. Our award-winning content will help you choose the right professionals for your needs and make informed decisions about your investments. Personal recommendations are a powerful tool in connecting with trusted professionals. Let us introduce you to the right people to help you achieve your real estate goals. Contact us now to learn more about becoming a member and gaining access to these valuable resources or joining our directory of experts.